Hi, welcome to Raven's Wing Tarot. My name's Amanda, and pile number one, you have chosen the large Lemurian Quartz. And we are exploring, what are you currently healing? What is it that you are currently healing? I'm gonna put your crystal over here, your overall energy card right here. And then, I don't know why I keep getting this impulse. This is the book for it, and it's been wanting me to pull it out since before I even sat down. <laughs> I hadn't done that. Sorry. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and pull your spread. Um, just a reminder that if you would like to book a personal reading with me, um, you can access the link to do that down in the description box below. All of that. Okay. And this is like a big old grouping. Hmm. We'll do like this. I hope that your day is going well. Also, I should just warn you, I have a cat now. <laughs> it's been almost a week and he is sleeping in the chair right here underneath the table. So <sighs> let's hope he stays that way and doesn't cause ruckus. I have my squirter here. In case I need to get him. Okay. Oh my gosh, this is hilarious. The overall energy is Bastet of 174 hertz. Bastet is an Egyptian cat. It's like a hairless Egyptian sphinx. That is great. I love that. That is so funny. Um, and Burkers is still here too. Burks always sit. He's right here. And he sits under the table or lays down there. So that's funny that they're both right by each other. Burke's kind of steers clear from him because Aslan's kind of honorary. <laughs> oh yeah, that's his name, Aslan. Okay, anyway, Bastet of 174 Hertz. So anyway, Burke's always does help me do energy work and um, tarot readings. Like he's always helped me anchor that in. But he's turning 11 and I feel like Aslan has come in to take... Oh, I grabbed the wrong one. It's this one. I already grabbed it. Has uh, taken... Um, it's gonna kind of like take over for him and give him a little bit of a break because he's he's done a lot of energy work for a lot of years with me. Obviously 11 of them. Okay, Bastet of 174 Hertz. You've been moving so fast for so long that you're not realizing how wound up you've become. Gently unwind now to drop into a deeper, slower healing rhythm and you will restore your body, mind, and soul. Things which seem too difficult right now shall soon seem very manageable and even pleasurable to accomplish. So immediately I pick up that you, you are ready to go into like a sleeping beauty, spiritual winter type of a thing. And you're learning how to be okay with not moving and with being in a very slow hermit mode type of a rhythm for yourself and maybe you feel very overwhelmed with a lot of things that are going on with you in your life right now going on in your life right now <coughs> excuse me and you're not sure how <coughs> i choked on my spit somehow you're not sure how you're going to be able to get through it you're like i don't even know where to begin with this or i just don't have the emotional capabilities right now to even deal with this how the hell am I even going to get through it but there will come a point where you will have like this light bulb moment because there's all these little crystals in this chakra and then up above here and like the soul star and um above it's like this massive download like an aha moment where you uncover this shadow aspect of yourself that's wanting to be nurtured and when you do you're going to have that, once you have that aha, you're going to be like, oh, I know how to handle this. I know how to tackle this obstacle. I know how to, to move forward from here. And then once you do, you're like, oh man, you can't seem to get it done fast enough, not because you want it over with, but because you're like, oh, I feel empowered now. Well, that's awesome. And here's the thing. There's been a lot going on right now, whether you're watching this uh, at the time I've, uh, filmed it or recently, you know, recently uploaded it, or you're watching it a year from now, it's divinely time to find you. But we've been going through a heart chakra 
expansion and a solar plexus. And most people have been going through a Kundalini expansion that happened a couple of weeks ago with the full moon. But now we're focusing more on the heart and the solar plexus. And I feel like that's what this um, is talking about right now too. This, the, the, the feline energy of the Leo, of the fiery, that's what I feel. It also feels very light and feathery, that, that balanced energy. Um, and just to add in here, the Egyptian cat-headed goddess of dance, festivals, birth, healing, and sacred potions is known as Bastet. Her sacred cult was one of beauty, pleasure, and enjoyment. Worshipping her was not about ignoring the problems that are a part of being alive. In fact, just as cats can see the dark and are natural and sk skillful hunters, Bastet was often called upon for psychic protection from hidden negativities and to secure one's life force and enhance one's vitality. In her role as healer and creatrix of magical healing potions and sacred perfumes, she integrates healing with pleasure, relaxation, and sensual connection to the physical world of nature, including beautiful natural oils and jewels made with precious and semi-precious stones. So basically, um, you know what? Take this time to luxuriate. It's like the, the total self-care. Um, take this time. Don't think of it like, oh, I've got to go within so I can do all this healing. I need to go within so I can heal. I've got to do all this work to heal. The healing is in you just learning to surrender and take care of you and indulge in some things because you probably don't indulge in things for yourself very often. You probably splurge and spoil others, but you don't do it for yourself. So that's what they're asking for you to do right now. Oh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Hold on. Let's... Let's look here. Oh, whoops. I can't just tell you how awesome this is. Yes. The pleasures of the of the flesh and things, enjoying like a good meal, getting a massage, crystals, essential oils. I, that's what I was feeling off of that too. And thinking of very Torian energy of enjoying the finer things of life in life and like the uh, very much putting oneself first. They can be very generous and giving people, but they also will put their own wants and needs before others or find a way or an angle that they can make it work in their favor and also someone else's. But it's important that it works in their favor first before it can fall in line for someone else. Not all of them, but a lot of times that's a, that's very much a trait. But they do know how to enjoy good food, um, like nice nice uh, accommodations for like sleeping the sensuality sensuality doesn't have to mean sex it could be just in the way you move and even dance you can dance sensually without being sexual but here we go you've got the three of pinnacles which this is things are being woven do you see this things are building there's a foundation here you are the foundation and how you're th this time out while you're on this time out it's allowing time to think it's a giving time for things to stabilize in your external reality and get a solid footing so you can build a strong um build very uh, securely on top of that also here with this king of swords it's the muse of air um sorry muse of voices but it's the king of swords it's still it's this very much this balancing these shadow aspects because there's a big moon there um, and we do have a new moon coming up uh, over the weekend. Um, so very much this moon cycle is going to be affecting you more with this releasing because new moons are often about re releasing, but the moon in general is about hidden, um, hidden, the unconscious, the subconscious um, illusion even, but I don't feel like this is illusionary at all. Yeah, this is more about getting perspective and, and learning to befriend your darkness and even dance with it. Because look at this. I've never really paid attention to that before. Or it's never stood out, I should say. That they're dancing. They're mirroring. It's very much balancing. And it's uh, they're, they're dancing. They're, they've got these flowy little dresses and they're dancing. So Bastet talks about dancing. Let, let me just tell you. I was twerking in my kitchen when Back That Ass Up by Juvenile came on making my lunch. Like... I'm 41 years old. Hell yeah, I'm going to back that ass up when that song comes on. That's like 
the millennial and Gen X cuspers like clarion call. It's like our bat signal. <laughs> you hear that? Or like, oh, you better stop what you're doing and get in position to start working. So anyway, like it's just, and ain't nobody here to see me but me. And it was just so much fun. And it helps you move energy, helps you be present in the moment. And it helps you not take yourself too seriously, right? And then you have the queen of pentacles here. This is this queen of pentacles, not only does she scream confidence, but also um, and abundance with all of the roses and the very strong feminine energy. But I feel like this is very much safety and security because you've got these two, they look like the, um, the root chakra Sanskrit symbols for the root chakra. So this is your safety security, which I already, you know, with these two pinnacles here in between, like this is, this is very much needed for you to sit back and receive. Like your action is no action. Your action is to take care of yourself. This is balancing out your masculine and feminine energy of that needing the, the do I need to do and control with also knowing when to be, you know, be open and receptive and loving and nurture your own self. So you're learning how to do that for yourself. Ah, oh, <laughs> I just, it can't get any better this reading. It just can't. So first of all, the eight of pentacles, it's learning how to balance. Really, that's so funny. I was just saying that it's learning how to balance your physical reality. See, she's got all these arms and she's like playing yo-yo with um, these roses and some of them, she's juggling them and even yo-yoing them. Like she's skillfully doing this. It's not like she's like, whoa, I've got to try to figure out how to do this. It's she's masterfully balancing this. So that's what you're learning how to do is you're mastering the art of the balance in between aligned action and, um, and active passiveness. I was trying to figure out how I wanted to say that. Active passiveness. So your action is to just be passive and allow things to come to you and use that downtime. When you get downtime, it's not like you're doing something wrong. It's a gift because when things, the pendulum swings back the other way with this natural ebb and flow that we have going on with life and creation and abundance and everything, when the pendulum swings back the other way, you're going to be so busy. You're going to be like, oh my gosh, I need a break. So when you do get these breaks, take them. Take them and don't freak out about it because you are taken care of. Here with the temperance, again, it's cycles. You've got a moon cycle here, a white lotus, and then you have a sun up here. And um, temperance, so temperance is, again, it's about balancing. It's about, so the, the term to temper or to the action of tempering is when you want to make a custard, but you don't want to make sugary, sweet, chocolate, or lemon scrambled eggs. So you take, you separate, separate the whites from the yolks, and you scramble up the yolks with some sugar, and then you heat up your liquid, typically like a cream and a milk. You heat it up to where it's just boiling, and then you take one little ladle at a time and whisk it into the egg yolks, until the egg yolks have come to temperature, they have tempered, and then you can add them back to the saucepan with the rest of the hot liquid and continue to stir it and heat it until it simmers, right? That's a cooking reference. So that way you, the eggs naturally thicken up the custard versus putting in the cold yolks into the hot milk and getting scrambled sugar eggs. That would be nasty, right? So there's just this process of, and it takes a little bit of skill to do that, right? Another way to passively temper is my very first job was at Brahms Ice Cream and Dairy Store. And we would have these big square tubs, I don't know, of like five gallons of ice cream. And that's what they kept in the little bar thingy when you go through the line to fill it up. So when one of those big square tubs ran out, you had to go back to the, or when it was getting close, you would have to go back to the deep freeze, walk in, and you would pull one of those out and you'd sit it on the countertop for an hour to allow it to temper, to come to room, to sit at room temperature for an hour so it could even itself out before you could drop it in there. Otherwise, you would not be able to scoop that shit. 
So that's another example of tempering. But if this is a cycle of purification, balancing, because again, she's mirroring here. And again, with this moon cycle, by the way, it's right under this card with the moon. And she just seems very purified. I'm going to read about this temperance one here. I just want to see what the keywords are. For sure. Okay, I just want to make sure he's still there. I don't want him to figure out the dog door. I ordered this little <clears throat> collar that vibrates when it gets too close to the sensor. And I'm going to put it in my little, I have a French doors right here that are in like this little annex area. <laughs> in the meantime, he's getting more and more curious about it. I saw his little face staring at me on my patio through the dog door window. And I was like, fuck, all he has to do is push on it and it'll be gone. He was a little uh, street kitty that I rescued. And I'm like, no, buddy, you get your balls chopped off on Monday. <laughs> you can't get out yet. Okay. Harmony, balance, the middle path, avoiding excess, blending energies and ideas, alchemy, finding purpose, the Goldilocks zone, meaningful encounters, turning a life lesson into spiritual gold, patience and healing. Yes, I love it. I knew there was a reason why I wanted to read that for you. Here's the other thing. Here's your pentacles. Now, the, this is another pentacles. You have one, two, three, four pentacles. So there's four corners, right? Four corners, psh, pentacles. And then you have an air and a major arcana right there. I just thought that's interesting. So this is what I call my timeline shift card. Do you see this? She's on this little conveyor belt of both balanced of light and dark, right? Black and light black and white lines and she's going through this cosmic tunnel and there's all this abundance here and she's actually what is this she's harvesting the roses as she goes and i call this as my timeline shift card I, funnily enough we actually had a timeline shift recorded on the schumann resonance scale last night it was from like 4 30 p.m central standard time in the u.s to about almost 11 p.m so for about six hours yesterday afternoon into evening. We were charting higher than 40 hertz and the um, fifth dimension frequency begins at 40 hertz, it's 40 to 100 hertz. So anytime we start graphing and getting frequencies stronger than 40 hertz, and that's all the farther, that's the, all the higher that the uh, Schumann records, then it just doesn't graph. And so it's recorded as a blackout. But the funny thing is the electromagnetic background always continues to record except for one time. So I think that's very interesting. So that all just happened. And I was just saying to my friend um, who called me just a little bit ago um, was that we just had this timeline shift and we were talking about certain goals that we had and that we were manifesting. We've been talking about forever. It's a collab that we've been wanting to do or that we are going to do. Um, I said it's malleable right now because we just had that timeline shift so it's malleable for us to um, really focus on the abundance and don't give in to like that doubt and that fear we can't that's what we will continue to repeat and we're done repeating that right so keep keep this just feel as whatever you can do to nurture your inner child right now is the best there's nothing on here for that but that is really the best energy to get into think of Kevin from home alone when he's not fighting the bad guys, when he's like, you know, taking his bubble bath and eating his junk food and watching TV and staying up and you know what I mean? Okay, I'm gonna give you one last little card of guidance. Well, there's two, well, hold on, we'll see. There's some fighting. The Otter, Moonstone, Feminine Energy, Playfulness and Honor. That, if that doesn't just go along with what I was just uh, summarizing. So the feminine energy of being nurturing to self, um, open and receptive for all this abundance that's coming to you. All you have to do is just chill and take, you just have to luxuriate, bro. That's all you gotta do. And the playfulness with the, uh, the inner child is what I was talking about. Spirit of Otter, help me honor my feminine side with ease and playfulness. Thank you, Aho. So, right, the action, there is inaction. It's not like you have to do, 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 do. All right. Okay, I hope this reading resonated for you. 
And um, if you'd like to book a reading of your own, you can find that link in the description box down below. And please let me know. Please do tell me in the uh, comment section what pile you picked and how it resonated. Okay, all right, love you, bye. Hi, welcome pile number two. You have chosen this selenite. And today we are exploring what are you currently healing? What is it that you are currently healing? So I'm gonna put your labrador, not labradorite, <laughs> selenite right here. Hold on. There, that way you get that selenite flash the whole time. Also, I just want you to take note of this big gigantic, gi gi what do you call it? Gigantor. <laughs> this big gigantor I got going on here. There, there. There we go. Okay, so let's see what we got going on here. <sighs> what are you currently healing? Oh. oh yeah, I've got a new kitty. Aslan, that's his name. His last name is Asgard. Aslan Asgard. Aslan, I did not realize, many people told me, I asked him what his name was and he told me it was Aslan. So that's what I did. And I was like, why does that name sound familiar? And I Googled it, and it's um, a Turkish boy's name, and it means um, lion. And it was often used for emperors. Funnily enough, I realized in my good tarot deck that the emperor card is... Let me see if it's there. Nope. I've used it since then. The emperor card is depicted as a lion. Yeah. What? I thought that was crazy. Then other people were like, oh, no, that's from Narnia. I'm like, well, shit, I haven't seen that since 2007 or 6 or something like that. So I went ahead and uh, rented it Friday night and watched it. Whoa, the pelican flipped right on out. I'll flip that right there. Is there one more? Yep, there is. And the kingfisher. Okay. So anyway, I'm trying to train him until I can get my little vibrating deterrent thingy to keep him from going back where the dog door is. I've got this bottle of water I may have to use on him. So just letting you know, <laughs> he's being trained. <gasps> you guys, this is so crazy. The first pile, pile number one, got Bastet, which is a cat, an Egyptian goddess cat. You guys get Yi Shi Songul 333, and it's card number 33. There's only two cats in this whole deck, and <laughs> you get the two cats. And Aslan was here this whole time I've been filming, except for he got up to eat right as I was starting to pull for you guys. That is so crazy. Okay. Oh, man. That's, this is a, um, a very positive card. So what are you healing? And Burkers has been over here the whole time, too. All the animals are acclimating well to each other. Hmm. <laughs> You shall overcome all obstacles. Success is imminent. So stay connected to your path no matter what and continue to apply yourself. Allow your spiritual path to support you in all areas of your life. Live by your spiritual beliefs. Seek out the support of your spiritual brothers and sisters for help when needed. But also trust that you are intimately and directly connected to the powerful divine within. There can be a dramatic healing breakthrough when you rely upon your spiritual connection. So crown chakra for sure is blocked right now. I don't ever say anything in absolutes like that, but it is. I, I'm feeling into it right now. Crown chakra is blocked. That's why you feel like maybe the spirit has maybe turned their back on you. Like I've been doing all this work. I've been doing all this work. Why the hell? Well, it's about to pay off. It really is. Don't give up. It's like... You're, it's always darkest before the dawn. Ouch. <laughs> and you're like, right, you're digging through that tunnel. I don't know if you've seen this little cartoon meme from like 100 years ago. But this dude's like been digging and you tell he's been on this tunnel he's dug for so long. And he gives up just as he's got this much more digging to do. And there's a whole cave full of treasure, right? I feel like that's where you're at. <laughs> yep. You got the two of swords, sorry, the seven of swords, the page of cups, and the five of swords. So yeah, seven and five of swords. Okay, I just wanted to finish. I, just, I thought I knew where this was going. I just wanted to be sure before I spoke because I don't like to misspeak. I like to be sure of myself. Okay, 
So yeah, you have, see this card is about illusion. When you're in your shadow, you're not seeing things as they really are. And there's two coyotes, coyotes, however you want to say. I'm sorry if that looks weird in front of my face. You have two coyotes psh, psh, mirroring. I don't work with coyote energy because they are tricksters and they don't trick you for any reason other than their own pleasure and delight. So I don't use that. But if you look here, she looks, she looks more stoic, more confident, more unbothered. And the path that she's choosing here, I want to point out the paths. So the path this way, when it's upright, you see that there's this new reality just on the other side. Sevens talk about you've done the work. There's still a little bit more. You've gone the journey. You just need to cross this bridge of illusion. That's what this is. Now, if I flip it over, there is no path. The, there, the only, you can't, if I flip it over, there's no path. The only path is this light here. This here is locked. You can't walk down it. There's no path there. It doesn't lead anywhere. So that's what it's saying. The only path you can choose is your light. And the way that you do that is by balancing your heart and your sacral and your root. Because you are <sighs> gaslighting yourself. You're too in your emotions. You're fired up. You're passionate and fiery passionate about this, even though this is a water card. You need this water, this nurturing, loving, uh, healing for yourself to cool that fire and Put that fire out it needs to be put out and you need to let you, the waters of your heart chakra shine and open so that the overflow of all of this can um, open up the sacral and the sacral makes you feel st when it's blocked makes you feel stagnated you don't feel there's no creativity or maybe you have all these ideas but you can't get started um, but you also store your emotions the overflow from your heart into the sacral and it also can manifest as like a weak libido um things like that but yeah definitely they're asking you to be in tune with your heart chakra the heart chakra 432 hertz i would actually see if you can find um a soft soft geo frequencies that cover all the frequencies i feel like that would really benefit you and you can just listen to that best with headphones if you can listen to that while you're getting ready uh, in the morning, like after you get showered and everything, maybe like while you're brushing your teeth, doing your hair, things like that, or before you go to bed at night or both. I feel like that would do a lot for you besides any other practice, spiritual practice that you want to, to um, honor. But I feel like that would be the easiest way to kickstart you if you're very clogged up or get energy work done um, like acupuncture, chiropractic, massage, Reiki. I, off I offer Reiki sessions if you're interested in that at all. <clears throat> you can find that in my Etsy shop. Um, but anyway, the five of voices. This is the five of swords. This is shifting your perspective. You need to ch fives represent change and obstacles and usually a challenge. And you see there's this olive branch with the fruit on there that's being offered, but they're just like, I can't, I possibly can't. And they're not wanting to see it. They're even covering their eyes like, oh, I'm not going to look at what's being offered. I'm not, I'm refusing to see this from another perspective, from the higher perspective. But what, if you can move into your heart, because look, everything, the path is highlighted for you. The heart chakra has these little light bursts coming from it. Here, this peace offering of the um, olive branch and olives have a light burst coming from them. There's also one more. Oh, here. You can't really see it because it's so small, but there's a light of, there's a burst of light around this, the end of this uh, tunnel, the light at the end of the tunnel. Okay, so yeah. Also, there's people uh, meditating, doing yoga down here. That could would help you too to get into your body to move your body um, would be a good way. I don't know if Kundalini yoga would be a really good one for you, but any sort of any sort of thing that moves your body is going to help you break up that energy. And um, even breath work would be great because here's the thing: you've got the World card and then the Knight of Cups, Knight of Cups. 
So the world card, this needs to be, this cycle is going to be completed. Like you're almost, this is a ma major cycle, a big cycle that's played out in your life. Um, it's going to be wrapped up. Once you can do this and once you can see what this was teaching you, because that's what it's saying is like, you're going to overcome this and you're going to, you're going to know it's all going to, it's all going to make sense. Once you get that perspective shift, you're going to feel empowered and you're going to close this um, cycle out. I, I, I was debating whether or not to say this, but I have to say it because it's in my head. I, I thought of that uh, Little Wayne song, Drop the World. I'm going to pick the whole world and I'm going to drop it on your fucking head. But he also says, I could die now and leave Earth, motherfucker, hop up in my spaceship. No, oh, I can die now and be perfect, motherfucker. Hop up in my spaceship and leave Earth, motherfucker. I'm gone. Yes, motherfucker, I'm gone. I'm gone. Okay, I had to finish it. I couldn't help myself. But again, my millennial is showing. My Gen X millennial cusp is showing. But anywho, that's what I got this. It's like you're going to feel masterful and be like, oh, I can. I, this is it, man. I'm empowered. I know how. To, like I figured it out. I figured out this whole ascension thing. I figured it out how it works for you. And here with the Knight of Emotions again. This this is a very similar energy, but this is a this is this is very similar message to pile number one. If you were drawn to that one, I would go check it out. But this one's a little bit more intense. Um, I feel like you're a little bit more in the meat of it. Um, but with the Knight of Cups, I feel like this is the pile number one is stage two of this pile um but the knight of cups is that playful playful he's playing around and splashing in the puddles mm -hmm. that emotional release and getting just learning to play again um i feel like that's what it is there's nothing more exciting than the doing and splashing around in the puddles and just having fun and being carefree and that they're saying and knights are often about movement um and quick movement and that's Kind of like they're saying you need to do this quickly to help you you need to move your body because you got things stored in there it's a really good idea for you to move your body and do some breath work and maybe some meditation or something more intensive than what you've been doing or if you have been do doing this keep doing it okay so you have the pelican and the kingfisher Choose to follow the path of forgiveness and raise your vibration. I like to say frequency because this um, it, physics wise doesn't make sense. It actually will trick you into not raising your frequency, but that's a whole other thing. But I always say frequency instead of vibration because it's a frequency that matters. It's not necessarily the vibration that we focus on. It's measured in frequency. The higher the frequency, the higher the dimension, the less density the lighter you are. Um, but anyway, there's somebody you need to forgive. That's what it is. The higher perspective, perspective is you're being a victim in this somehow, some way, and maybe this person was a total piece of crap, okay? And they are just an asshole and there's no excuse for them. There's no victim blaming here. I'm just saying you played a hand in it somehow, some way. We always do. Typically because we ignored red flags we gave people multiple chances when they didn't deserve it and we didn't respect ourselves enough to uphold our boundaries. And when you can reflect on how did you not honor yourself by allowing this person to continue to have access to you, you know, that's the thing. And this is not like you did something wrong. This is just what it took for you to learn to break this pattern so you can have fun again. But yeah, it's time for you to move on. You're healing, you're healing some bitterness right now and you're learning how to forgive. That's where you're at. Kingfisher, prosperity is flowing. Have faith that you will receive it in perfect form. Yeah, I really do feel like this whole thing has to be done and sewn up and this person had to be exposed to be removed from your life in order to, um, I'm sorry, I keep looking to make sure he doesn't go out that way. He's a little sneaky shit. In order to make room for this abundance that's flowing. But the abundance, it's not going to come like right this moment. Like you got to, you got to, you've got to learn your, get your perspective shift. You got to take care of you. And then when you truly make space, because you're holding on to this thing. So you're not able, you need to let it go so that you can 
have what it is that's being offered to you and you're maybe the offering it could even be that this person's out of your life because maybe you're you're focusing on the betrayal of everything that you're not seeing that this person really was a terrible person and there was a lot of things about this uh this maybe even a situation that you didn't like maybe it was a job if it wasn't a person maybe maybe there's a lot that you didn't like okay for me um i actually mm. want had been wanting to take my products and make a uh, skincare and hygiene products and i had had them in a local store and i noticed that for the first like three or four, the first four months of this year i did, hadn't had any sales and that was highly unusual especially since i had just dropped off a huge batch of full restock and more stuff because things have been doing so well that I added more and more stuff. And not a single one of those things had been, I added them on New Year's Eve, I think it was, and nothing had sold all fucking year. And I was like, what the hell? So I went in there and I looked and she, the owner had moved my stuff, didn't tell me, and she literally put my stuff on the floor, the very bottom shelf, and to where nobody, who's gonna get on their hands and knees and look down, because the shelf was this big, on the floor yeah and there was dust on there i was livid i didn't say a fucking word i just got i just threw all my shit in my bag and pulled every last bit of my shit out of there and never talked to her ever again and i'd also been complaining about that that was a blessing in disguise why was that a blessing in disguise because i realized that i didn't really align with this person anymore they're faky mcfakerson um they um are actually kind of a very terrible person I had overlooked some things and thought that they had grown, but no, they are still showing the same, just very much two-faced, vindictive stuff, and I couldn't be a part of that. On top of the fact that they not only were charging um, a consignment fee of 33%, which is really high to begin with, and then hit you with a $17 admin fee just for writing the checks which she didn't have to do anything because we all did everything ourselves and there was a whole app i'm just saying i was basically just giving my products away just sitting there and i was so pissed off because that was not told to me prior i was like what that's ridiculous that is ridiculous so that was a blessing that just gave me the go ahead to be like now nah, i'm taking my shit out so was i did i feel stupid for giving this person another chance and everything no i needed to do it I needed to go through that to learn a whole bunch of things that I learned. And that's exactly what you had to have this experience to teach you what you needed to learn. And it's time for you to see it for that and feel it and, and be done feeling sorry for yourself. Okay? I'm sorry. Sorry I had to say that to you. Don't ever shoot the messenger, all right? This is just, I'm just doing my job. The fox, tangerine aura quartz, camouflage, observant, and playful. Again, with the playfulness, I love it. Camouflage. Tangerine Aura Quartz. With the fox. You know, this looks, this Kaya looks very similar to a fox. And it's like using that energy instead of being a coyote, being a fox. <laughs> what do they do? They, they are masters of disguise. They can hide. They're very, I think of, I think of um, foxes, cat dogs. They're technically related to um, canines, but they move like a fucking cat. Like, they're a cat, <laughs> but they're a dog. So, yeah, and be observant. Just kind of observe your own patterns and kind of see from a higher perspective. So that's where I'm going to uh, leave you with your reading. I hope this uh, empowered you, gave you perspective. If you would like to book a personal reading, you can access the link down below for that. Also, if you would let me know which pile you picked and how it resonated, I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you so, so very much. Bye. Hello. Welcome pile number three to Raven's Wing Tarot. My name is Amanda, and you have chosen the small Lemurian Quartz. Put that there. Here's your overall energy. And here we go. We're going to see what are you currently healing? What are you currently healing? Um, just so you know that I do have a cat now and I don't know where he is. He's being really quiet. I'm thinking he's sleeping on my bed. Shit. Dang it. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh my gosh. That's so funny. I just saw what that card is. It's hilarious. 
Um, but anyway, I might have to squirt him with my little water water bottle if he gets into any mischief while I'm filming. He's actually done much better today. Yesterday, he uh, jumped into my lap and almost took my mic and the whole uh, tripod down while I was doing a live. <laughs> He's being a little bit more subdued today, and I think that has to do with the energy. He did run around and fuck some shit up earlier, though. He loves all my paper bags. He likes his toys that I get him, too. He likes that. Okay, I wasn't going to take that canary, but apparently the canary wanted to come out and play. One more out of here. It's this guy. Okay. So let's see, what are you currently healing? His name is Aslan, by the way. Okay, overall energy. Oracle of Chaldea. Ooh wee. Oracle of Chaldea. This is like a third eye and crown, something here. This chick kind of looks like Jennifer Lawrence. I never really noticed that before. I thought she looked familiar, but that's why. Okay, let's see what it says. Card number 37 out of the Lana Fairchild or Elena Fairchild uh, White Light Oracle. Continue on your healing journey with enthusiasm, but without forcing things to happen more quickly than feels natural. Sometimes the body will be ready to let go whilst the mind is still holding on. At other times, the mind may need to be patient as the body processes an experience. Trust in your own timing and rhythm. There is no need to be impatient or to judge yourself. You are summoning the spiritual fortitude to tackle an issue that has previously held you back. When the time is right, the healing shall happen more easily than if you tried to push forward prematurely. Things are going to work out. Be positive. All right. So this is the classic case of... Um, so for me, when I'm in the, I'm about to shift into something, I feel this big shift occurring. I'll get this. It's like, I want to, I have all this energy of, um, feeling pensive or restless and I want to do, I need to do, I need something to do, but there's nothing to do. Or my body is like, no, you ain't doing shit today. Like you got out of breath just taking a shower like the energy is whooping your ass you need to take a break or I'll I'll feel you know like I've got all these plans but there's it's a timing issue like no I can't do this yet I have like three hours before then I can even do that and but I have all this energy that's ready to explode out of me and it can almost drive you mad because there's something that you like I would do this it was probably for a period of about a, a week maybe a month ago where I would feel um, like I wanted to go out and be social, but my body was like couch locked. I was stuck. It's like, oh, you ain't getting up and doing shit. Like that's how it feels. But it also could be that your body feels physically fine, but you're just so in your head that you mentally can't process everything that's gone on. So they're saying, don't think, oh, I've been sitting around too much. I need to get busy doing something or have that itching feeling of like, I need to do something. Just allow for yourself to do what you need to take care of you because this is what your body needs to do um, in order to move on. And trying to, here's the other thing. If you're trying to do all these modalities to get rid of a feeling, it's not going to work. Sometimes you just need to feel the feelings. You just need to feel it. The only way out is through. So for example, drumming, like the, I learned this one day during COVID. Um, I had all my sound healing tools and stuff and I was having some shadows were shadow stuff come up. And what I do, I've like banged on my drum. I played my singing bowls out in the sunshine. I did my chimes. I did yoga. I did, I balance to use my pendulum and balance my chakras with Reiki. I did all of these things and nothing seemed to work. Um, nothing seemed to work and I just, it didn't, it didn't give me any relief. And the lesson that I learned that day was sometimes you just have to feel. And when I just surrendered and stopped trying to force myself to move through it and actually allowed myself to fully, to feel the fullness of everything, it was just like this, whoosh, it just moved through me and then it was done. And then I learned that day 
that when I have a shadow aspect come up, instead of being like, oh, I need to do all these things to fix it, I just sit with it. And I feel like that's what they're asking you to do is sit with it because that's what you're learning how to heal right now is learning to just each time it will be different and require something. You're, you have a different need each time you're going through something. That's the way it feels. And you're getting familiar with different ways of healing. You have the magician, the sun card, the strength card. I forgot about that one. That's the one that flipped up. The eight of swords. And oh my gosh, the seven of pentacles. Uh, okay. This is so awesome. Okay. First of all, three major arcanas in a row. When I was talking about my cat was when this strength card flew out of the deck and landed on the floor face up. And I saw that was a strength card and I thought that was hilarious. All these piles are related in some way, shape or form. So I would just, if you were leaning towards pile number one or two um, and you couldn't decide, I would go back and look at it. But if you weren't, then don't worry about it. That's just for people that were. Sometimes, sometimes people pick all three piles and they all resonate. And sometimes the only a portion of the messages coming through via one pile is for you. So anyway, the magician, it's card number one. It's right after the fool. Do you see this powerful alchemy? Wow. This is, this, you're learning. Yeah, you're, I don't even know. I feel like this being passive thing, this is just, I don't, hold on. I need to look at this. I need to look. I, want, I don't ever usually flip them all and look at them, but I feel like this is going to be a pretty direct message. Yeah. Okay, there we go. That pretty much summarized this. This tied it all together for me. Okay, with the magician here and the sun card and the strength you're going to you're learning to access this right here this is what you're learning to access and that's why it feels so intense because these are major arcanas so this is like heavy big, i call this big tit energy okay <laughs> because it's a lot it's not just like oh it's a little bit like here's some advice it's like no this is really prominent very dominant energy and with the strength card, I always see the strength card. You know, you got the line there and she's writing the back here. Um, and the sun is behind. Oh, wow. Look, what's that? The sun here and the sun here. So this, these are both fire cards, right? Masculine energy. Um, but oftentimes when we get the strength card, it's saying you're going to need to dig deep. That's what I feel like. You've got to dig deep. Because the, your next card here is this Eight of Voices. This is like a self-induced prison that you've created to, in your own mind. They're not actually really bound. They're just bound by their own grief and the shadows of their mind. And they're using, they're having to be their own beacon of light. Nobody's going to come save you. It's you have created this mental prison for yourself. And so what you're learning to do now is this alchemy. Um this inner alchemy and using your light and there's no negative aspects to the sun card. Sometimes it could be about being overly optimistic, but I'm not really seeing that you're having an over abundance of optimism right now. I feel like you're being told that you need to be optimistic because you have all this magic. It might not seem like it's making sense right now. It's going to. So be strong, endure, there's really awesome things happening behind, behind the scenes. There you go. That's what this is as well. There's these, uh, stay strong because there's things happening behind the scenes you don't know about yet. And it's about to come to you and you're going to find out <laughs> and you're going to be super stoked. Okay. So this card also came out in this uh, reading in pile number one. And <laughs> this is funny. Um, I call this my timeline shift card. And oddly enough, we had a recorded timeline shift where you might notice Mandela effects and things. No matter when you're watching this, it doesn't matter. It's timeless. So the message still stands. But we, the Schumann resonance was down for six hours yesterday. And any time that it, um, the frequencies rise above 40 hertz, the Schumann only records to 40 hertz. So if it's higher than that, it won't graph it. And we, that is when 40 hertz 
is when the fifth dimension begins. So we're getting those 5D energies coming in. Um, we have the opportunity when we get our mental and our emotional space and our creative space all balanced and I've always feel like this is an alchemy card too because you got the four balls there, it's the elements here and they're the conduit between the heaven and the earth. When you get all of these elements, the earth, wind, fire, air, all these different elements balanced, you can be that conduit to anchor this reality in for it to be reflected in your external. Because you see she's traveling through this cosmic portal and there's equal parts light and dark, shadow and white, right? White and black. And then she's pick, harvesting and picking up all of these uh, roses along the way. So it's this trail of abundance. You're being catapulted to abundance. There is abundance around you. You may not be paying attention to it right now. You might be a little lacking in the gratitude department because you're overcome by whatever this thing is that you're obsessing over. But they're saying, quit doing that. <laughs> There's things that's happening behind the scenes that's bringing you really awesome opportunities. So just lighten up and the healing's going to come to you in its own time. Okay. Hummingbird. Release what you've been carrying and lighten up. New joy is on the way. So yeah, they're like, take a break, man. Just be happy. The worst of it's over. I feel like the worst of it's over. And you can pretty much just be in cruise control here, right? On the conveyor belt and enjoying smelling the roses and picking the roses along the way. Um, also, Canary, step forward now and sing your song. There is power in finding your voice. So speaking into existence what it is that you want what do you want to create the energy right now is prime you got the magician and the sun card and the strength card so it's all being amplified manifestation sevens also talk about you've done some work there's still more to do so i feel like that's what you you've got to get out of this shadow in your head get out of that shadow you know nurture yourself with your spirituality and, and connect through your spiritual nature and you'll be able to move through all of this. But anyway, it's speaking it into existence, put it laying down boundaries for yourself and others. <clears throat> and then we have the blackbird. The magical and unique qualities of your untapped potential are unfolding now. Yes, that's the magician. This just summarizes the magician. Also, if you've been having any of these birds visit you, just know that they are your little spirit animal guides. And now you have the flicker. New rhythms are coming into your life now. You are encouraged to trust and adapt. Any changes taking place, allow it to happen. Just go with it, go with the flow. You're on a fast track to aligning to your abundance and whatever it is that you've been manifesting, again with that crown chakra and the spirituality, connecting back into your spirituality um, and really leaning into that right now is going to be of high benefit for you at this time because you're also learning more about your manifesting abilities with that magician card and the untapped potential are unfolding now. Yeah, you got something really awesome coming your way. Like with the magician, the sun and the strength card, boom, boom, boom. And I feel like the eight of voices is something's being hidden from you. So don't give up. Keep doing what you're doing. Um, and it's all going to align. Just don't keep your shadow in check. Don't, just don't keep your shadow in check. I would say just don't let your shadow take over and keep your shadow in check. And I'm going to do one little cut for you. The snake with labradorite. Transmutation, balance, and healing. So, yeah. You're just working on what, what you're healing right now is balancing. You are balancing, transmuting. That's basically it. That's what you're healing. Huh, that's so funny. And I just ended up, how did this even get there? I d this is crazy. This was the card that I cut for pile number one. I did. I thought I left it out and I don't think I shuffled. I just, that's weird. Okay, well, all right. Have fun. <laughs> I hope this reading resonated for you and empowered you and gave you confidence. And if you'd like to book your own private reading, you can access that link in the description box below. And if you would let me know what pile you chose and how it resonated, I would appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye.